Anything like that, oh. Oh, no. Oh, my. Thoughts are written there, isn't there? And would, I think I've read it all. Would you mind if I uh, took this and showed it to Carol and see what she says? Uh, no, well, I don't mind. How uh, about you, Daddy? Well, I think they should give us a price on it. Oh, no, no, no. It, no, would, no. it wouldn't be for sale. No. no. There wouldn't be any sale on it. It would be just a, a matter of record for the Historical Society. Yeah. For you the see, what I history. have uh, done, there's maps in there of Anui, and it really settles a lot of arguments. Of course, you could go to the courthouse and see the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But I can look up here and see what block it is yeah, and so yeah. forth. And but I, I could show this to them. Carol and see what she thought we, you know... Um, See, it hasn't been brought up to date. That's another thing. It's not up to date. But you were telling me at one time that you thought it was a stop-off place for the uh, people going from Nez Perce to uh, from, Cataldo? No, from, I don't know. From Lewiston to, to St. Mary's. Now, from Lewiston to St. Mary's. Yeah. Yes. Now that's, what was your friend's name that used to live over here? That was telling us so much of this stuff. Oh, Elmer. Elmer. What? Travis? Yeah, Elmer Travis. Yeah, now he was an old timer here, and he oh, told us a lot of history about on the way in the places yeah, around here. Yeah. And he told us that this was an overland route from uh, Lewiston to St. Mary's, because St. Mary's was an old. Um, old trading post and, and um, what, uh, what are they called when they're hunting and so forth. Anyway, it was an old, old town, St. Mm -hmm. Mary's. Yeah, St. Mary's. Yeah. So they, the one way to get the ties from the coast was to, try, to get it up the Columbia River and into the Snake River and up to Lewiston. That's about as far as they could go and then take it overland St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and the road from down there to Moscow, and it went right through here and on up to St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. They had all these relay stations yeah, right. along the way, yeah. and this was a relay station. This house. Pull my curtain a little bit. I can clear off that window. That's good. Thank you. And this, well, this is an old well out here. Yeah. And that was the first well that they had, and they you know, where they had to have water for their horses. And the back building, they had a big barn back there. They, it was still there when we moved here. They tore it down. Yeah. It's just nothing but a wreck. And, uh, but that's where they kept their horses. And they could stay here, get a fresh team of horses, and go on to St. Mary's. Now whether they... St. Mary's. What? Go on to St. Mary's from yes. here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I thought that was interesting you bet. itself. You bet. Now, this well here was dug, and I don't know the year on it. That's one uh, east of the house here. Yeah. yeah. That's With a good windmill. well. Good cold water. With the windmill. And then they had a reservoir up on the hill. And that reservoir furnished water for a lot of these places here and on the way. Hmm. Roy Berry lived here when the city of Onaway was on this around here. And he said there was close to 30 shacks down here. And then they they moved it up to Onaway. Hmm. Yeah. Elaine Owens and her first husband used to live in this little house up here on the hill. Who? Elaine Owens and her first husband. Oh, first husband, husband yeah. yeah. What was his name? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Because yeah. I didn't know her until she married Wib. Oh. Hmm. What are some of the other great memories you have of your life? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> when I moved up on Hatter Creek, I wanted a little farm, and I got 40 acres up there. I got it for $900, but I didn't have a decent well. And I was going to build a house down closer to the river, and I teched a place there where I could get water. It didn't have to go down over 10 feet, and I got all the water I wanted. Mm -hmm. But that, that time then, I wanted a different house. There was just nothing but a log house there, and Irene didn't want to live in that log house, so this uh, guy that was living there, he had bought the 40 acres above me, and then he wanted to sell out. It was Gordon, Whit 
Gordon. What was his name? No, I wasn't here. He had bought that. His wife had left him, and so he wanted to sell it too. So I bought the second forty, and I had eighty acres. Wouldn't like the country. <laughs> I never wanted to move out. Well, I, now I'll, what is that? Who's on that farm now? Who oh, has that now? What's that guy's name? His wife works in the drugstore. She's a big woman. In the drugstore? Yeah. Now? Yeah. She she, oh, uh, Rody? Rody, yeah. Owen oh, Rody. Joyce Rody. And yeah. what's his name? Owen. Owen Rody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they moved the house out that I had put, I had drilled well up there and put water in the house and made it modern. And for some reason, they moved the house out. Hmm. And now it's up at the house just places just above there where what's their names that lives there I can't even remember what his name was anyway I got acquainted with him I was setting planer up there at uh, Bricks and Tunison before I went to Ed Barnes and uh, but I couldn't work up there all the time I was working at Paul and and it's and supposed to what do you call it moonlight yeah well, Bricks and Tunison, now that's a name I, I'm not familiar with. Who yeah. is that where the Coles Mill was or where the. Bricks and Tunison sold out to these people from. Uh, oh, is that where Stitzinger. Who? Stitzinger had the mill there. Did he? I didn't know Stitzinger. It's the one they shake when you go over the hill, it's right off to the right hand side. And, and oh, what's their names used to live up there and now they moved to. Eckers. Eckers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's Bricks and Tunison had that mill. Yeah. Well, then Stitzinger had it when I went to work at Bennett's. Yeah. And then, uh, no, Coles had it before that, because Jim worked for Coles when we lived on Elm Street. Yeah. So there was a Coles in there sometime, and that must have been somewhere. Oh, well, there was an outfit that had a little lumber yard there in Princeton. Was that the guy's Coles there? He just handled lumber. Didn't, wasn't there a McKinney had a little mill there? I don't know, but anyway, one day he will come down to see me, and he says, can you drive Stradabug? I said, yeah, I can drive Stradabug or a lift truck. And he said, would you come up here on Sunday and help me? His employees didn't want to help him on Sunday. So I went up there and helped, and he didn't know how to scale lumber. Hmm. So he had me scale his lumber hmm. for him. And so I worked that Sunday, but I didn't go back anymore, because I, I was getting in too much time down here at the mill. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it was when I was working for Bricks and Tunison. I got Larry Poston to take my place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Bricks and Tunison, that's a new name to me. Bricks and Tunison, they was there quite a while. Yeah. Hmm. Was that before, while well, Boone had the mill where Bennett's are? No, Boone, al or Boone already had his mill down there on the flat. Okay. Yeah. I worked for Boone when he had the mill up on Metacritic. Way up there. Is that right? During the Depression. On Meadow Creek? Yeah. Of course, the one time there, Ray and I brought in a load of logs getting pretty late in the evening, and and we had to was really rock our logs. I mean that. Yeah. So I was down there and, you know, blocking the logs, and pretty soon the whole deck started moving. Uh oh. Man, I run up that deck of logs and got off of there. But it did, they didn't go through, they were just probably moved one log or something and started the rest of them. But boy, I was scared that time. I'll bet. Yeah. I didn't know there and was a log on Meadow Creek. Yeah. Oh, Bay Boone. Bay Boone died. Why, I used to go see him. And he was so tickled to death to see me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you know Bill Wakeman? No. You didn't know him. He was the head of the planer. And I was working on the rebut then. and and. Uh, here he came up there one morning and he wanted me to come and go to work for him down in the planer. Hmm. And I didn't go down there because we were a chip on. Clem O'Reilly was my partner. And we was making pretty good money. We was even making more money than the graders were. And I didn't go down. And finally old Bill Wakeman, he got sick and I was stopped in there to see. He was living up on top of the store. Remember when mm -hmm. the apartments up there? Mm -hmm. I went to see him there and he was so glad to see me. Now, was that after the war? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, old Bill Wickman, he never come out of it. He was a tall, slender guy. 
Yeah, I don't know whether there's a lot of pictures in the Mason's Hall down there. I just wondered if his picture is in there. Could be. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah Paul Latches. I worked there almost 45 years. Gosh. Started in 26 in the box. Ended up in the planer. I even worked in the sawmill and I followed him up there with Otto Thrasher and Bill Wright. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dean Nagel. Remember Dean Nagel? Mm -hmm. The one that got killed? Mm -hmm. uh, he was working with me there too. And then Craig, Ralph Craig. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He worked with me too up there too. They lived across from the old Kennedy Ford Grange Hall. Yeah. 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 Benny Cohen was in there. He was a head man. Ben Cohn. Yeah, Ben. He mm -hmm. used to play his, what was it, accordion? No? Uh, Banjo or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, was it Bessie was his wife? Yeah, she Bessie comes Cohn. to the dinners once in a while. Right. Yeah. Bessie Cohn. She was related to the Thrashers, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. And the Thrashers were related to... Uh, Thompson. Uh, yeah, uh, Ruby Thomas was yeah. related to the Thrashers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was a Thrasher, wasn't she? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because Otto, he comes down once in a while, and and Ruby Thomas is her his sister. Oh yeah. 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 Now Ida Bell Packard is Ruby's daughter, isn't that right? Yeah. 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 So we'll bring it down. Glenna's to... sister. You know Glenna? Yeah. 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 And Glenna and I and Audie Catta. No, not Audie Catta. Hash. Hash. Huh? Audie Hash? Audie Hash and uh, Mrs. Thompson. What's Lois Thompson? Oh, I went Huckleberry in one day. It's not Lois Thompson. It's um, Lillian. Lillian Thompson. Oh, Lillian Thompson. Yeah. You know where she lives? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had them three women with me. We didn't get started at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We ate dinner, you know, senior citizens, and then he decided, I'd like to go Hulkenberry. So we went Hulkenberry, but we didn't get hardly any. I probably was working. No, you wasn't with us. I said I was probably working. I, I don't think you wanted to go anyway. No, anyway, like... what little bit of Huckleberries they got, they give it to me. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when we was up there, why well, we seen some big berries. We wasn't too far from the road, and then I went down there and she broke, pulled the whole plant out. Oh boy! Because <laughs> it was just loaded with berries, and I don't know what they were, but they was good. You picked it. Mom made a what did you make a pie out of? It? No, not that long ago. Don't <laughs> ask me what happened last month. <laughs> About a pie making? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, I can tell you that I have made a pie all winter. I'm Crazy. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, like Glenda, she she would bring up us going to Hawkeye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was always doing something like yeah, that. I, you know, there was dips in the road, and my glasses wouldn't. I couldn't catch them dips, and I hit them too, dips too fast. I know Lillian Thompson hit her head on the ceiling in the car <laughs> once. <laughs> when we was coming down the hill, my Glenda was sitting up in front of me. She says, "Now there's one of them dips." And I couldn't see it, hmm. but now I can. I got new glasses, and I can see them. Now. Were those dips put in there for water drainage? Yeah, that's across yeah. the road. See? Yeah, yeah. And it, hey, it wasn't straight across; it was at an yeah. angle. See? Angled. Yeah. yeah. And boy, you get a double twist out of them. I know he took a bunch with him one time, Huckleberry, and one of the nurses from the hospital went with him. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, we got quite a few buckleberries. Sure, buckleberries that day. I love to go pick huckleberries, and I haven't been for a long, long time, but I love just going up there and just sitting there and pick, pick, yeah. pick, you yeah. know. I haven't gone either, because I'm not too happy about the bees. I don't want to get stung by a bee, well, they, I'm allergic to them. Well, I am too, pretty much, but uh, the bees weren't bad when I've been huckleberry. I had this big lab dog, and we took her for some reason or other. We took her along with us. And we got up there to pick the huckleberries and she oh she liked huckleberries so I'd take off and feed it to her. I got tired of doing that and I grabbed a bush and I said, Here, help yourself 
and I had held it down there and made her eat the huckleberries <laughs> off the bush after that where she picked her own huckleberries. <laughs> <laughs> she just go down there eating you huckleberries. Her yeah, well, yeah. She was smart. Yeah. There was six of us one time went up above Santa. We heard that there was a guy worked up there and he was worked in the box factory. And he told me we got huckleberries up there, up on Santa above Santa. And so by the way, the six of us went up there and we come out with fifty five gallons. <gasps> how long were you in there picking? Just two days. Part of two days. How many of them? Well there's there was a whole bunch of Indians in there. And they wasn't picking them, they was thrashing them out. Of course you get a lot of leaves. Yeah. And if you're gonna pack them, why well, they don't mash in leaves. That's a good way to haul them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, with all the leaves, we had everything filled with huckleberries. Yeah. Fifty-five gallons 55 in two gallons. days. How many of you picking? There was six of us. Cool. Pauline and Al, and who in the heck was with, Al, with us? We stayed all night. You and Irene. Yeah, uh, Irene and I. Yeah, and me. Al and Pauline, and uh, who in the heck was the other? Carl and B? Uh-huh. I can't remember. You know what, us six used to run around together. We, Carl and B. Clifford? Yeah. Yeah. We even went swimming one night after the dance. <laughs> was it cold? Yeah, Toose River? Yeah, up at Laird Park. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. The water was warmer than the air. It was better just stay right in the water. Yeah. What time of the year was that? Now, that would be in August. It would be July, I think. July it was August. August, yeah. But talk about huckleberries up there. They call it the Black Hole Hump. And I've never been there since, and I've always wanted to go. Black Hill Hump? Blackwell. Blackwell Hump. Blackwell Hump. And I've heard that that road is so bad that you have to have a four-wheel drive to get in there. Mm-hmm. But I would like to go back. There's 1,200 acres up there. Is that right? 1,200 right. acres of, of huckleberries. Right. There was. Yeah. And uh, you know where they had cut them off? That's where there was the thickest. They just, you just like trimming a... A tree. Daddy, those Indians have been doing that for years. They knew how. Yeah. They cut them off the bush. They didn't pull the bush and shake them into a car. Uh, no, into a they, tarp just, or something. they just the cut the top off, and then, you know, the next spring, they really yeah. grow and bear. Yeah, but when they pull the bushes up and they shake them off like that, then it just destroys them. Oh, yeah, well, they didn't pull them up. They cut them off. Oh, be darned. They must have had machete knives to do that with. I don't know what they had. They were sleeping on their brush piles. I thought, God, I'm going to try that. I couldn't sleep on a brush pile. <laughs> like no sleeping, brush. Stick me in the ribs. And, like sleeping on rocks. It's just about. <laughs> so I got back in the car. We didn't, I don't know whether we had any, oh, we must have had some blankets with us. Yeah. Gosh. That was quite an outing. He had a lot of fun. Yeah, but that's why We got married. Well, haven't you had fun since? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. Different kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I built a bobsled one time, and four of us could ride it. And Alan and Paul in and Ruben and uh, Irene and I used to come down that potlatch hill, and there was a spot between the store and the hotel was bare, and strike that there loose gravel and the fire would just oh, fly. Boy. You bet. <laughs> you had uh, wooden runners with uh, metal strips on the bottom? Yeah, yeah, I had metal strips on the bottom. And when we moved to Hatter Creek, I took it up there and with me, and someone wanted to borrow it. And that was the last I seen of it. Oh, dear. I don't know who got it. I didn't know the kids, but they wanted to take it. And I think they tied it on behind a horse or a car or something, and i never seen it after that. Hmm. This Hatter, he comes to the dinner once in a while. Bob. Uh, watch it. Watch the cord. <laughs> <laughs>